When we describe the graph, we describe it in terms of the edges that connect pairs of nodes in it. So when we give the graph and you look at it, you see a bunch of nodes and a bunch of edges, each of which is connecting two nodes, precisely two nodes. However, having just edges between two nodes sometimes hides the story from us about the connectivity in that graph. So if I look at a certain graph and a graph like this here, for example, if I look at a graph like this, A, B, C, D, E, is there an edge between A and E? The answer is no, there is no edge. But is, is there a path between A and E? The answer is yes. And when we deal with graphs, usually what we are interested in is whether, whether there is a path between nodes, not an edge. Having an edge between two nodes is very restrictive. If you look at, at the, the roadmap of, of the United States, for example, we don't have a direct street or road that has no traffic lights and no intersections. You cannot exit, you cannot enter from between every two cities. That's very inefficient. You cannot connect every two cities in such a way. Right. So if I want to go from Houston to Seattle in the United States, I have to go from Houston to city A to city B to city C, so many cities until I get to Seattle. This is the notion of a path. I don't have an edge between Houston and Seattle. I have a path between Houston and Seattle. The same thing. I don't have a direct flight from Houston to, to Paris, for example, but I have a path. Uh, I have a flight from Houston to London. There is a flight from London to Paris. That's all I care about, that there is a path that will take me from Houston to Paris, even though that there is no direct flight between Houston and Paris. Okay? This is what this lecture is about, the notion of graph connectivity. So when we talk about a graph, an undirected graph, and we, want, we talk about the notion of a path of length k, a path of length k in the graph is basically a sequence of nodes that are connected by k edges, okay? So when we talk about the length of the path, we are measuring the length in terms of the number of edges on it, okay? So a path that connects two nodes by one edge, that's a path of length one. And a path that connects two nodes with by, by means of two edges is a path of length two. Okay, so if I have, if I have this graph here, For example, A, B, C, D, E. Do I have a path from A to C of length three? The answer of length three, the answer is yes. That path, in terms of the nodes on that path, it's A, go to B, go to E, go to C. This is a path of length three because A and B are connected by an edge, B and E connected by an edge, E and C connected by an edge. Is there a path between A and C of, of length five, for example? The answer is no. If I try to go from A to C of length 5, I will not find such a path here. Is there a path between A and B of length 1? The answer is yes. Just take that edge from A to B, and so on. Now, notice that if the graph has something like this, so I have nodes that are not connected to, ev to, to everything else, is there a path of length 1 from A to D? No. Is there a path of length 2 from A to D? No and so on. There is no path from A to D. No matter what the length is, there is no path from A to D. So we say in this case that D is not reachable from A or D and A are not connected. Okay. So if I look at this graph here, there is no, there is no path of any length from A to G or from B to G or from F to G and so on. There is a path of length 3 from A to D. For example, the path of length 3 from A to D takes me from A to F, F to C, C to D, for example. Is there a path of length 3 between B and E? A path of length 3 between B and E? The answer is yes. I can go from B to C, C to F, F to E. So this is a path of length 3. Of course, there's a path of length 1 from B to E as well. Okay? When we talk about directed graphs, it's the same notion, but we have to respect the direction of the edge. I cannot say there is a path from A to B if the edges cannot lead me from A to B. So if I look at this, at this digraph here, directed graph, and I ask, is there, is there a path from, from uh, C to A? From C to A. 
Yes, there is a path from C to A. It's a path of length 2 here. This is a path of length 2 from C to A. Is there a path from A to C? The answer is no. I cannot go from A to C. I cannot go from A to anywhere because there is no edge outgoing of A. Is there a path from D to G? No. There is a path from D to G of length 1. Okay. From D to C of length 1, like this. There is no path from C to D of any length. Okay. So between the difference between undirected graph and directed graph, when you are traversing paths in undirected graph, you can take the edge in any direction you want. When you're dealing with a directed graph, you have to respect the direction of the edge. When we talk about paths in a graph, there are a couple of, uh, uh, of uh, notations or definitions that we, we talk about. The first one is simple. We talk about a simple path. It's a path that doesn't have the same node more than once. Okay? So a simple path, for example, a simple path between B and C is BC. This is a simple path between B and C. A path that's not simple between B and C is B, E, F, B, C. If you look at this, this is a path from B to C. I basically go this way. B to E, E to F, F to B, B to C. This is not a simple path because we visited the node B more than once. And if you look at it, you will see that we created a cycle there, actually. B, E, F created a cycle. So a cycle is a simple path that begins and ends at the same node. Okay. So B, E, F here in this figure is a cycle. C, B, E in this graph is a cycle and so on. A path that's not necessarily simple and, and begins and ends at the same node is called a circuit. So here is a circuit, for example. A, B, C, D, E. If you look at this path in it, for example, A to B, A to C to E to D to C to B to A, this is a cycle. I took a cycle here, but the problem with this cycle is that I visited C more than once. So this is, this is a circuit, not a cycle, okay? C, D, E is a cycle. A, B, C is a cycle, but A, C, E, D, C, B, A is a circuit. An acyclic graph is a graph that has no cycle in it, okay? So, this is an acyclic graph. This is an acyclic graph. This is not an acyclic graph. It has a cycle in it, okay? So, a graph that has a cycle is, is, is not acyclic. An acyclic graph is a graph that has no cycle in it. The last uh, two notions I want to talk about are connected components of a graph and strongly connected components. A graph is connected if there is a path between every pair of nodes in the graph. And connected component is the maximal set of nodes. Is a, a connected component is a maximal set of nodes in the graph such that there is a path between every two nodes in it. Okay, So a graph is connected if there is a path between every two nodes in it. If I look at a graph and I take any maximal set of nodes such that there is a path between every two nodes in it, then what I have is a connected component. Okay, so actually let me, let me show an example of, of, uh, of connected components. So if I look at this graph, for example, here, this is a connected graph. This is a connected graph. If I look at this graph, if you look at this graph and it has nodes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, this is not connected. We say disconnected as well. This is not connected. And what are the connected components of each one of these graphs? So then the graph on the left, for the graph on the left, the whole graph is a connected component. So if the nodes are labeled A, B, C, D, E, there is one connected component here, which is A, B, C, D, E, the set of all nodes. If I look at the, the graph on the right, it is disconnected. What are the connected components? I have one connected component here, two, three. So we have connected component one consists of the nodes A, B, C. 
connected component 2 consists of the node DEF and connected component 3 consists of the nodes GH, I, J. Okay, so this is what connected components are. When we talk about directed graphs, now we change the notion of connected because here it's not about a path between every nodes because now we talk about direction. A digraph or directed graph is strongly connected if there is a path from every node to every other node. And we talk about strongly connected component as a maximal set of nodes such that there is a path between every two nodes in that, connect, uh, in that component. So let's look at this graph and ask, okay, let's call this graph here, let's call this graph here G1, and this is G2. Let's focus on G1. Is this graph G1 strongly connected? In other words, I'm asking, is there a path from every node to every other node in this graph? So if you look at A, for example, is there a, a, a path from A to every other node? Yes, there is a path from A to B, from A to C, from A to E, from A to D, and so on. Is there a path from, from uh, uh, B to C? Yes, B to A, yes. For example, from B to A, I can go B, E, D, A, and so on. If you look at this graph, you'll find that there is a path from every node to every other node here. So this is strongly connected. The whole graph is strongly connected. If I look at G2, is there a path from every node to every other node? The answer is no. There seem to be path from every node to A, but the problem is that there is no node, there is no path from A to anything else. So what, uh, what are the set of connect, the strongly connected components here? So for strongly connected components, for example, I have to take maximal sets of nodes such that there is a path between every two nodes of them. So this is a strongly connected component here. There is a path from B to C and B to, to E. There is a path from C to B and C to E. There is a path from E to B and E to C. So this is a strongly connected component. E is a strongly connected component by itself. D is a strongly connected component by itself. So in this graph, we have th three strongly connected components and each one of them is a maximal set of nodes such that there is a path from every node to every other node within that set. 